Hey everyone, welcome back to my After Effects tutorial. Today, we are going to create this. Special thank you to our partner, AE Juice. Check out their Liquid Elements Pack. Over a thousand frame by frame animations for your projects. It comes with a handy pack manager plugin. Basically, it is a huge asset library on demand. Press the shortcut to open the plugin, drag and drop, and you're done. This is one of those investments that last your lifetime. The links are in the description. In case, you don't want to follow this tutorial, you can download this free template, from the link in the description. So, let's get started, open After Effects and create a new composition. Let's call it Photography Logo Intro. As always, I am using the 1920, by 1080 resolution. At 30 frames per second. The first step is to import these files into your project. You can download them from the link in the description. Place them into the project window, and let's organize the project. Simply grab the files, and drop them onto this folder icon. It will move all the selected files into a new folder. Now open this folder, and place the background image onto the timeline. Cool. Now I am going to make the composition of the image, for the same size as our frame. So create a new solid layer, I am calling it image 001. Make it to the comp size. And then hit OK, now right click on it, and choose pre-compose. I am calling it image 001. Make sure to click on move all attributes into the new composition. Now open this composition, by double clicking on it. And then place your first image file onto the timeline, if you need, you can always adjust the size and the placement of your image. Switch back to the main timeline and then press S to open scale. I am going to change the scale value of 55%. Cool. Now right click on it, go to the layer style, and choose stroke. Now expand this stroke option, and first, change the color to the white. Now change the position value to inside, and then change the size value to 25. Again right click on it, go to the layer style, and this time, choose drop shadow. Open this drop shadow, and change the opacity value to 30%. Cool. Now go to the first second, and open position, by pressing P on your keyboard and add a keyframe on it. Now open rotation, and add a keyframe on it as well. Press U, so that you can see both keyframes. Let's get back to the first frame. Grab this image layer, and place it far from the center. This image should not be visible in the first frame. Also, I am adding a rotation value of 10 degrees, to get some random movement. Cool, RAM preview this, and it should look like this. Now select all keyframes, right click on it, go to the keyframe assistant, and easy ease them. Open graph editor, select the last keyframe, and change the curve to something like this. In case your graph does not look like this, then right click here, and choose edit speed graph. Adjust the curve, and then switch back to the timeline. Now it will look smoother. Let's turn on the motion blur of it. In case this switch tab is not available here, press F4 to switch between. 
If your F4 key is trying to find a sweet watermelon, for a chilling summer party, then right click here, go to the columns, and choose parents, mode, and switches. Because we are going to need them. Now click here to switch on the motion blur for the layer, and then activate it from here. I usually activate the motion blur at the end, because it can slow down your workflow. Ramp preview this, and see if you like it. Cool, this looks good to me. Let's add more slides to it. Make a duplicate of this image comp, by pressing Ctrl, plus D. Let's zoom into the timer line, so can we can see the 10 frames distance. Go to the 20 frames position, and then press the open square bracket key, to place the starting position of this layer, at 20th frame. You can always do it manually by dragging your layer. But there is a one problem, in this second image composition. If I want to change the image of it, I cannot do it, because it will affect all the compositions. And the same image will be applied to the first image as well. It is happening, because they have only one single source. As you can see here. But we can fix it very easily. Let's undo a step backwards. Now go to the project window and make a duplicate of it. Make sure you have selected the image which you want to replace, else it won't work. Then press and hold the Alt key, on the keyboard, and then place it over the selected image comp. And you are done. Now if you open this composition, and replace it with the second image, it will be applied to this composition only. This is how we can fix it. Cool. This image placement should not be too perfect, so let's open keyframes by pressing U, go to the end keyframe position, and let's add a rotation value of 6 degrees. Also, go to the first keyframe position, zoom out a little, and place the first position of it somewhere like this. I am also adding a new rotation value of negative 33 degrees. Just to make the random movement. Ram preview this, and see if you like it. Cool, this looks better now. Let's quickly make one more slide. Select this top layer, and make a duplicate of it. Place it after 20 frames forward. Go to the project window, and make a duplicate of this image composition. Now press the Alt key, and drag it onto the new composition layer, which we have just created. Here we need to add, exact 20 frames distance, between each layers, but I cannot see the frames correctly, it is showing the frames with the time duration. Simply go to the time watch, and then press and hold the control key on your keyboard, and click on it one time. It will switch to the frames style now. Let's place it on the 40 frames, or 20 frames forward. Now go to the first frame and change its position, as well as the rotation. Now go to the end frame, and let's add some random rotation, as well as position to it, so that it won't look too perfect. For changing the image, simply open this composition, and then add your image. You can always delete the bottom image if you need. Cool. Let's quickly make more of these layers. I am fast forwarding this step, because they all need to do the same thing. We are just adding some random positions, and random rotations. I am keeping the 20 frames distance between all layers, if you need, you can always increase the distance, to showcase the image correctly. But because we are making an intro, I am keeping the duration shorter. I am making total 10 slides, so 9 slides will be used for showing the photography. And 1 slide will be used to making the logo reveal. Cool, now we are going to add the logo. Simply follow the same steps as we have done before. Go to the 20 frames forward, and place the starting position of it. 
simply press the square bracket open key. Now open this composition, and place your logo on it. I am removing every single layer from it, except the background image. Let's adjust the size of the logo, and if you want, you can change the background color of the image. Go to the layer, and click on solid setting. And choose any color you want. For now, I am going to use this navy blue color. Switch back to the main timeline, and let's place the starting position here. Now, I want my logo to appear normally, at the last position. So, I am removing all the rotation value from it. Let's minimize all layers, by pressing U on your keyboard. Now create a new null object. Go to the first frame position, and let's call it scale. Press S to open scale, and add a keyframe on it. Now select all layers, including the background. Then grab this pick whip, and drop it onto the scale. It will connect all the layers with this scale. Go to the end frame position. And here change the scale value to 150%. Select all keyframes, right click on it, and easy ease them. Cool, let's create some light leaks. Create a new solid layer. I am calling it light leaks. Place it on top of all layers, and then go to the effects and the presets. Here search for the fractal noise. Apply it onto the layer, and let's adjust a few settings. First, change the factor type to dynamic progress. And then change the contrast value to 350. Also, change the brightness value to negative 50. Now change the complexity value to 1. And then open transform. And change the scale value to 1000. Now we will use this evolution, to add some animation. Press and hold the ALT key on your keyboard, and click on this stopwatch icon, to add an expression. Go to the timeline, and in this expression box, type time, star, 120. And it will start moving by itself. Let's add some color to it, again go to the effects and the presets, search for the hue saturation. Place it onto the layer, and let's adjust a few settings. First, click on this colorize option. Change the color saturation value to 100, and change the colorize hue value to 21 degrees. Let's change its blending mode to the screen. In case your light leaks look too bright, you can always adjust the contrast of it. I am changing the contrast value to 200. Let's make the light leak more smooth. Again go to the effects and the presets, and this time search for the Gaussian blur. Apply it onto the layer, and then change the blurriness value to 200. Cool. Ram preview this, and our animation is complete, I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching this tutorial, have a good day. Download unlimited After Effects templates, royalty free sound effect, stock footage, and more. Visit Envato Elements. Check the link in the description.